Hi everyone, it's Jeff Challen. Um, we're gonna, this is a series of screencasts designed to get you started using the Test 161 tool. So at this point, uh, you need to install Go to install Test 161. So this is just a very short um, introduction to installing Go, and you need to do this on the machine where you run Sys161. So Go has packages for a bunch of different types of systems, but you need to install this in the place where you build your OS161 kernels and run them using Sys161. So there's a couple of options here for installing Go. Um, Go has a bunch of uh, packages, uh, official Go packages here on their website. So you can see they've got Go 1.6 now for Windows, um, OS X, Linux, and you can build it from source. Um, the, if you just try to install Go using uh, the normal Ubuntu um, apt-get command, you're probably gonna end up with a pretty old version. So you don't wanna do that. Uh, however, you can use, uh, there's this PPA, uh, the Ubuntu Containers team that packages a pretty a recent version of Go. You can see here they've got uh, Go 1.6 Release Candidate 2 up on their PPA for 14.04 and 15.04 and 15.10. So that's an option if you're if you're on those systems. If you're in 12.04, then, then that's not an option. Um, probably my favorite option, though, is to use the Go ver version manager. So this is sort of a, a separate project that somebody is maintaining. And, and what this allows you to do is very easily install multiple versions of Go and switch between them. Um, so let's do that. I've got my um, opsclass.org virtual machine right here. Um, and I just booted this up. I've got uh, really nothing installed in it except the base OS161 sources, but let's install Go. So we're going to use the Go version manager. There's a couple of things you have to install. First, using apt-it just to get us started. Um, that's things that are required by GBM, the Go Vernage Manager. Uh, there's a single command over here on the Go Version Manager website that will install the Go Version Manager for you. Um, it's pretty nice. So at this point, you can see that um, Go Version Manager relies on modifications to your environment. So if you log out and log back in, you'll have this automatically. Alternatively, you can, uh, if you want to continue on in your same shell, you can just cut and paste that command. And now you should have GVM running. So GVM allows you to install and switch between different versions of Go. Go, after 1.5, Go requires um, Go to compile. So there's a bootstrapping issue here. Previous versions of Go use the C compiler or some other compiler to, to build. So what we're going to do is we're going to first install Go version 1.4. Then we're going to use that to bootstrap uh, 1.5.3. And then we're going to remove 1.4. So this is pretty simple. Uh, we do govm install, gvm install, go 1.4. Um, that's going to show that it's going to download. It's going to build go 1.4, and then it's uh, going to install it. Now, if you install a version using gvm and you don't set this default flag right here, that will just make that version available to you. It won't actually. Um, it won't actually make that the default. So if you use this default flag, every time you log in to this environment, GVM will set you up to use that particular version of Go by default. In this case, we're only installing Go 1.4 so that we can build Go 1.5, and so we don't want to set that as the default. Um, this is going to take a few minutes. Um, if you haven't tried out Go before, I would uh, encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, it's a really very elegant programming language, um, has some really neat features, particularly for uh, working with concurrency. Probably the most exciting thing about Go is its support for concurrency. So we'll go down here to the this part of the tutorial. In a lot of ways, Go, uh, Go is a compiled uh, language, but is designed, so it's designed to have the speed of a compiled language as opposed to interpreted languages like Python, um, but it also has um, excellent support for concurrency, and really a lot of uh, language features that you might associate with interpreted languages. So for example, it has automatic garbage collection, which is really nice. Um, but the coolest thing about Go, since we're sitting here waiting for it to install, and I can preach about it for just a minute, um, is its support for concurrency. So if you go over to the Go Tour, you can actually uh, play with Go code right in your browser. This is a really neat feature. So um, I've got some Go code right here. I've got a function here that sleeps for a bit and then prints off a string. And here's my main function. Um, one of the things that uh, you will love about Go if you start to use it is that it automatically formats um, 
it will automatically format your code, which is really neat. Uh, so for example, Go has a formatting standard that it will adhere to extremely strictly. So if I stick extra spaces in here, the format tool will take care of them. So, um, so this is you know, how easy Go makes it to access concurrency on your system. So this is a function that just waits and prints off the string. And here what I'm doing is I'm just using that function three times synchronously. So if I run this code, uh, you can see what it's gonna do. Oh, I guess it prints it off a few times, right? So it prints Go is awesome five times, world five times, and hello five times. Um, and this is pretty typical. This is something that might look a lot like C and act a lot like C. Okay, so over here we've installed Go 1.4, so let's move on. Um, we're gonna tell GVM to use it, since we need to use it for uh, the next, and you can see if we run Go version, we're using Go 1.4. Um, but all we're doing with Go 1.4 is getting ourselves to Go 1.5. So now let's use that. Um, and in this case, we actually want uh, Go 1.5.3, and we wanna use that as the default. So let's install it first. Um, it's gonna get started. Okay. So back to the tour of Go. Now here's how easy it is to access concurrency in Go. So let's say I want one of these uh, functions to ex execute asynchronously. I want it to execute, essentially you can think of it as, as, it, as its own thread. Um, that's all I have to do, is throw this Go keyword in front of that function. And then, let's drag this up a little bit so you can see more of the output. Uh, you can see what happens is the output is interleaved. So say world is running in parallel with the first call to say, which is printing go is awesome. And so you can see if I run this a couple times, uh, I think that it looks like the output is pretty predictable in this case. Uh, it probably has to do with how the remote environment is setting things up. But these two things are, are running at the same time. Um, so go is, go is neat. Um, and uh, along with that, you know, go has support for, you know, now that you have concurrency, has support for uh, some really nice primitives that allow you to make uh, concurrency safe. We've talked a little bit in class about how hard that can get, but Go uh, provides some really nice uh, primitives, including the idea of a channel, which is neat. Okay, so at this point, we're compiling Go 1.5.3. Go also comes with a really nice package manager. You're going to see how, how nice that is in a second uh, once we get 1.5.3 installed and we can install our test 161 tool. Um, all right, this is taking a minute. Um, so uh, bootstrapping compilers is kind of an interesting, uh, I'll just make an interesting, uh, kind of make a remark on that. So you can imagine that um, it's kind of a neat moment for a language where you can write the compiler for the language in the language itself. Um, so up until Go 1.4, Go uh, was compiled using the C compiler, or I don't know, maybe something else. But after this, Go actually uh, compiles itself. So Go, the Go compiler is now written in Go. All right, so I've got Go 1.5.3. I'm going to set that as the default, and just because I don't like to have old versions hanging around of things, uh, we'll get rid of Go 1.4. Okay, so now if I run Go version, you can see I'm on Go 1.5.3, which is what I want. Okay, um, now Go has a couple of environment variables that I would uh, encourage you to look at that, that have to do with how Go, uh, where Go puts things. So in this case, Go sets something, uh, GVM sets something called the Go path. You can see this is a hidden directory here in my home directory, and GVM changes this as I switch between different versions of, of Go. If I go into this directory, back to sets, global, um, you'll see right now there's just a single thing in here that, that GVM has set up. But when I install the Dust 161 tool, there's going to be more things that are going to end up in there. Okay. So here we go, let's uh, get test 161. So the single command will download, uh, build, and install the test 161 tool that we're going to use. Um, and you can, this command is safe to run multiple times. If you run it the first time, it'll install it. If you run it the second time, it'll upgrade um, your test 161 version. As this is happening, what Go is doing is, is downloading various packages into my Go path. Um, and now this is finished, and you can see now I've got this test 161 command. So what happened, right? Let's just go take a look at kind of what Go did behind the scenes. So if we go back to the uh, my Go path, there's actually a bunch of things in here now, including a source directory. Uh, in order to install our test 161 tool, uh, which comes here, uh, this requires a bunch of other packages. Those other packages have been automatically downloaded by Go from various places. You can see that there's a bunch of them that came from various GitHub repositories, as well as things that came from golang.org and gopackage.in. I don't know what that is, but those are place, other places that provide Go packages. 
All right, and then the other thing that Go, uh, GVM does automatically for me is it sets up my path to include, in this case, you can see it has um, this directory in it, which is super helpful. So this now has, um, this now is where the actual test 161 binary was put. So I can go over here, um, and you can see test 161 is here. So here's our tool, sweet. Okay, so now we have test 161 installed. And at this point, uh, I'll move on to the next screencast.